Long ago in the faraway land of Uz, there lived a man named Job. Job was a good man. He loved God. He refused to do wrong. He was honorable. And he was rich. He had thousands of sheep, camels, oxen, donkeys, and servants, and ten children. Job was the greatest man in the land, and everything in his life went smoothly. Meanwhile, Satan took notice. He complained to God about Job. He only serves you because you give him so many blessings. If you take away Job's blessing, he'll curse you right to your face. God then told Satan to do with Job as he pleased, but on one condition, he could not harm Job. Satan slunk away, devising a devilish plan to make Job turn against God. One day, as Job was simply enjoying life, a servant ran up breathless with his devastating news. All the oxen and donkeys were stolen by an invading force, and the servants were killed. I barely escaped. Right as Job was hearing this horrible news, another servant ran up, shouting out, A huge fire came and burned all the sheep and killed all the servants. Another servant was running to Job, sobbing in terror. Job, the enemy came and stole all the camels and killed the servants. The servant had hardly finished when another servant came running to Job, screaming the most horrible news of all. Your children were having a feast together, and a terrible wind destroyed the house. Your children are all dead. In an instant, Job lost everything, his wealth and his family. They were gone. The grief was painful. Job tore his clothes, shaved his head, and fell on the ground. Satan thought Job was going to be mad at God, but instead, Job worshipped God. The Lord gave me everything, and he has the right to take it away. I will still praise God, Job said. Satan then asked God if he could make Job sick. He was sure that Job would then curse God. God told Satan that he could continue with his plan, but was not allowed to kill Job. Then it happened. Job broke out with sores over his entire body. He became very ill. The pain and itching were so unbearable that he took broken pieces of pottery to scratch the sores. Job's wife was of no help at all. She came up to her husband and growled, You're still trying to do good? Just curse God and die! Job did not sin. He continued to worship God. Even Job's friends started to turn against him. They thought that Job must have sinned for God to punish him like this. They were all trying to give him advice and tell him what to do. Instead of helping Job and praying for him, they criticized him. Through all this, Job still did not sin. He continued to trust and worship God. Job started to lose heart. He did not understand why God would allow these things to happen to him. So God spoke with Job and explained to him that as God, he created Job and everything in existence. As God, no one had the right to question him or his decisions, even though it may not make sense. God was trying to show Job a valuable lesson. Job responded in the only way possible. He worshipped, and he repented. Eventually, Job's suffering stopped. Satan's plan did not work. Job still loved God. God was so pleased with Job that he healed him and gave him back everything he lost. This time, he blessed Job with more children, wealth, and possession than he could ever imagine. Job even lived until he was 140 years of age. The end of Job's life was even better than his beginning. That was some good stuff, right? Well, I did some reading and checking out that video earlier. I want you to see what I came up with, all right? See you in a second. Hey guys. 
So you just finished watching that video on Job and that was a great story. Um, there were quite a few things that happened in that story. For instance, Job, in, from the very start of the story, Job was known as a good man. He was a stand-up man who did things that were right before the Lord. One thing you could take from that is God felt that he could trust Job because he knew what kind of man Job was. So here's a good question to start off for you guys is that what kind of person are you? Are you the type of person that God can trust? It's a tough question there. Can God trust you to be good to your friends? To say nice things when your friends aren't around? Can God trust you to be the type of person that has a Jesus Christ personality? I think that's vitally important. Another thing that we see about Job is that because of how I don't want to say good because the father says none are good, but because of the type of lifestyle he lived, Satan did not like that. And so Satan decided to go after Job, as you saw. Now, Satan did have to ask God first because God clearly says in his word that he won't let anything happen to us that we can not bear. All right. So. God says, okay, go ahead, try my man, Job. Well, that's amazing. That's an amazing thought because God says, I know, Job, go ahead. I know that even though things may get hard, things may get tough, I know what I have in Job. Does God know what he has in you? Will you leave God just because things get hard? Will you get mad at God and say, God, I can't stand you. I hate you. Woo. That's rough. Will you be like that just because things aren't going the way that you would like? Now, I know it's very early in your life and uh, maybe something that doesn't go right is maybe you get in trouble. You have to go to your rooms. Maybe you have to turn off your video games, right? But God says, I know what I have in Job and Job, no matter what's going on, I can trust Job. And so surely Satan came after Job. Now, Satan killed a lot of people that were involved in, in Job's life, like Job's children, as you saw. And you saw his animals. That Those are things that were valuable to Job. So Job lost the valuable things. How will you act when you lose something valuable, like your video game system, like your phone, like maybe your bedroom. I remember when I was a kid, I lost my bedroom because family members moved in and I had to share a room with my, with my family members. I could have been like, God, this is not fair. I'm supposed to have my own room. You know, are you like that? But God is so good and so merciful. He says, I know what I have in Job. Hopefully God says, I know what he has in you. Now, guess what? God knows. That he's not just going to leave you out there hanging. After Job went through all of that bad stuff that he went through, losing things that he loved, losing, <laughs> even losing his hair. You know, Job did not curse God, but he says, God, I worship you and I praise you. Some of us, some of your family members may be losing their jobs because of what's going on with this COVID, right? The the coronavirus. Maybe you can help them by saying, you know what? We may have lost our job. We may have to move. I don't know what your situation is, but maybe we should just say, God, I love you. And I thank you for everything that you're doing. I just love you for just being who you are, no matter what my situation is. Maybe you can do that. Maybe you can be the light or maybe that needs to be you. You're the one who says those things. So I just want to encourage you to be that and to do that. Because in the end, what happened with Job? He got everything back, everything. He got everything back and more. God doesn't forget what Satan does to us, the bad things he does to us and causes to happen. Maybe our families are split up. Maybe our parents are fighting and, and, and it's hurtful to us as children. God doesn't forget that. He has not forgotten that. He's gonna take care of you. This, I can promise you, but what?
Does our posture, what do we have to do? We have to trust God and never doubt and never say, forget you, God, never that. We have to be the ones that say, you know what, God, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to stay with you no matter what. This may be really, really hard, but I'm going to trust you, God. That's my message for you for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, Have an exciting rest of the week. There's more things we have in store. You never know. I could pop up in your feed with another video. But thanks for listening. God bless you. Let me pray for you really quick. God, I just pray for all of the students and all of the staff of RCA. Lord, you know the things that they're facing, the things that they're going through. Lord, you know it could maybe not be so great, but God, you are such an, an amazing God. And I just pray that you'd be with their families, be with them. And let them know that you have not forgotten about them. You knew about the things that are happening today before they were even born. So I just pray that they will learn to trust you in all that you do. In all of your ways. In all of our ways, we will acknowledge you. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this with me. You know how I am. Say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you so much for being here with me, no matter what's going on. You're still great. I love you and goodbye, amen. All right, bye guys.